Hey guys, it's Avengel. Welcome back to the channel. And we have a anticipated, much anticipated aircraft release today. Brand new in the marketplace. The Carinado Cessna 337 Skymaster 2. Teased since August and held back for multiple various reasons. Some updates and other things. It is finally here. This had better be good. Because this is my first time touching it. Or loading into the sim. What is it? Well, it's a twin engine push-pull. Uh, civil utility aircraft built... Um, in about the 1960s, or 1961 was the first flight, it originally was going to be the Cessna, or the variation of it, sorry, it's most famous, is the O2 Skymaster, which was the one that superseded the Bird Dog in Vietnam as a spotter aircraft. Now, twin 210 horsepower engines will cruise at about 170 knots and can do about 930 miles. As you can see here, we have a number of liveries that come with this thing, and it allows us to have pretty nice options. Let's take a look at the aircraft modelling, which is of course what we all want to see. As usual with the Carinado aircraft, it is well made. No problems there. Still the reliance on the two default pilot guys who look kind of depressed. Very sad that they have to be there. But just the same identical Carinado quality we'd expect exterior-wise. Nothing surprising there. My favourite one of checking the brakes. Honestly, I'd say this is the same as the Carinado one we had from FSX. In fact, looking at the textures, I'd say yes, it's exactly the same textures as the FSX one. Yeah, pretty much completely. The same mapping as well, where we have that V shape there at the bottom, where the bottom meets the bottom of the sides. Yep, this is the exact same one, I'd say, texture-wise, and probably model-wise, as the FSX one. In fact, if we look at the wheel textures, that is the same wheel texture they used on the 185 for the hub. Or at least one of the wheels on it. I recognise it very well. Let's look inside, shall we? And let's turn my head on. Let's take a look around in here. And everything is exactly as I'd expect, really, with the Skymaster. Of course, our door's open. And let's pop up our... Interesting. Where is your little pad? Shall I reach? Not sure where this actually one is in this one. They've probably hidden it somewhere, but we will find that. It will likely exist somewhere. But let's get our power turned on. As that was loud. Interesting. As uh, everything is turning on for us here. I actually have the mod for the GNS530 in there, so it'll look a little different in yours. I'm going to very quickly go to my folder for the aircraft, which should be under your usual community location in Flight Sim. Let's see where Carinado have stuffed it. Now, this is also a marketplace aircraft, so chances are it's been stuffed in the official side of things. Because I know most of them aren't located here, which does make finding documents rather difficult. Yeah, of course, nothing is located there. Let's go to the official directory, Steam for me. And if I look down towards the section, we've got a Sobo aircraft. Sobo airports. Carinado, there we are. Skymaster. Sim objects, aeroplanes. Documentation. We do have references. We have the usual copyrights. We have the normal emergency procedures, as Carinado like to include. Now... None of these documents actually show if they actually included the pad, like usual. It does not appear they did. So that's not working, it seems. Yep, doesn't appear to do anything on our weather radar. So you're gonna be, your guess is going to be as good as mine when it comes to trying to find out where they've hidden the... Uh, <laughs> where they've hidden the tablet, which they usually include with these aircraft. But judging by the fact that our parking brake is on and our battery is off and we had no things like chocks, maybe this one doesn't seem to... Oh, no, I'm just a blind idiot. They hid it there. In the pocket. There we go. So static elements on. We'll put the internal power and the tow bar on. That is open. Let's go outside and check this out real quick. Okay, so the usual accoutrements are included. But that wasn't documented anywhere. That was an interesting one to try and find. Cargo door and passenger door there open as usual. Chocks, cones, typical Carinado niceties, nothing too dramatic. So let's get rid of those for the time being.
I'm pretty sure I closed up the baggage door. Although we could be wrong. We have closed the door this time. That's a good start. Let's put the tablet away, shall we? And we'll start this up. Now. Do I have to click back down there? Hmm. We have the GTN compatibility, which is really nice to see that. There we go. There's a small click spot in the side there. Okay, so I'm just going to start both engines at once, which you really shouldn't do, but because I have my honeycomb installed, it makes doing individual mags kind of difficult. We have a good engine start. Okay. Engine sounds are reasonable. They sound a little tractory. I almost wonder if they're taking the sound set they used with the 182. That sounds very tractory. That does sound a lot like the 182, doesn't it? Just two of them. Well, let's take this thing out for a flight and take a look at how she performs. Now, having a twin that has the push-pull configuration means you have a lot of the same benefits of a twin, but without the asymmetric thrust, if should you lose an engine. Obviously, you'd have a lot less performance, but you will not get any adverse yaw because they're in the same axis, which is a big advantage. And it does make for a very clean Cessna profile that you're used to. The high wing and no visual obstructions of engines. So it makes for great observation. That's why it made a great military aircraft. Now, we should be getting ourselves taxied out here. We'll do our usual circuit to dip around. Let's put our flaps down here. We'll enter the runway at Orcas Island. Apply power smoothly. And we'll see what she wants to do. Let's put our yoke back on, shall we? Of course, cow flap controls there, which would be useful for flight. It's not simulated typically with Carinado aircraft, but... I do like the fact that a lot of their aircraft do actually have the correct simulation of the ground sounds and the creaking and clanking. Gear coming up and that beautiful gear animation. But we're still in the outside view so we can show you that coming up and down. The buzz does sound quite familiar though for a Skymaster so definitely different there to the, the 182 sounds but I love that perfect closure of the gear door. Very smooth and sleek. Love that. Okay, let's pull those flaps up and keep ourselves climbing here real quick. Okay, we're offshore pretty well right now. So we'll come around and start banking towards the mountains. Or the hills, I should say, beside Orcas Island. Uh, no performance issues I can tell instantly off the bat from this. It's performances on the numbers I'd expect. Well, for my sim's performance, the numbers are about what I'd expect in terms of frames per second and overall smoothness. Of course, I'm running this on a uh, RTX 2070 Super with 32 gigs of RAM, which helps. And this does feel very much like the FSX one, which isn't a bad thing because that one was gorgeous really well made aircraft back then. Obviously there's a lot of differences in gauge coding and systems and flight modeling with the new system, uh, especially when it comes to fuel tank configurations and operation. That's a definitely big thing. And speed is very high with this. We'll see how she slows down. Because we're quite high up all of a sudden. There's the airport down there. It's going to whine at me for the throttle being low. Put the gear down to help us slow down a little bit. gear coming down. You already saw the animation. So this one slows down very rapidly compared to a lot of the Carinado aircraft. They've actually maybe changed and fixed how they work with drag and uh, those various aspects of the simulator because unlike their Semnica, the Seminole and the Arrow, this slows down like you just threw a brick out the back on a rope. Really slowing down heavily now. Put some flaps in. Orcas Island's going to be right there. We're a little high up right now. We're just about 50, 1,600 feet, so we'll let the aircraft sink down here using the drag from the flaps. 
We'll bring her around and we'll see what she'll do. Not really needing to spend a lot of time with this aircraft for review's sake because unlike many aircraft, this does not have as many flaws. However, we already know what Carinado are as a quantity. They're a well-known developer and as I mentioned, this does strike me very much as almost identical like their other aircraft to their releases in FSX. The texture quality was always fantastic. The photorealistic styling works a little better in this simulator, I think, but they still look as they did in that sim. Obviously the new materials make a big change, which is a huge advantage, which means everything looks a lot nicer. But at least exterior wise and for the majority of the interiors, they do look very similar. And judging by the outside, the mapping is the same, which means the model's probably the same too. It was good in FSX, it was good in P3D, and it's good in this. Of course, this is a first look. This is not an extensive, in-depth dive into the exact performance figures. I'll let people work that out as they go. But I think a lot of you want to buy this, and after waiting so long, I think we all do. Is it worth your money? Well, it cost me £20 sterling. As typical with a lot of Carinada releases, and so far... This is exactly what I was hoping they'd release, and it's exactly what I was expecting them to release in terms of their aircraft. I know what some of their shortcomings are, I know what their advantages are. I've been wanting an aircraft like this, a twin with good visibility, preferably the Skymaster, to take on my cross-Canada trip from British Columbia all the way to Toronto. And this seems to be the one. Right, let's pull the power here. A little bit more flaps, third notch there. Big flaps on this girl. And that's my power needed to come in here because I'm definitely dropping too low. Let's keep the nose up a little bit there. Looking good so far. Flies exactly like I expected her to from FSX. Coming in nice and gentle, predictable. A lot of power with those twin props, and I think they also help to account for a lot of drag as well. That was a kiss there with the back wheels. Even big braking, nothing really to worry about with that aircraft. Flaps coming in nice and easy. I do like that Karen Ardu bothered to put the ground sounds in as well. Let's try and brake hard enough to stop and turn for this to turn off. How does she handle a sharp turn with a bit too much speed? Yeah, stable. Doesn't flop over or fall. Not my longest of flights in review, of course, but this is so very known and it's a very simple aircraft being a GA twin. Magnetos, fuel, starter, turn key, go. So even if you're inexperienced or inexperienced, this will be an aircraft you can have a lot of fun with. Of course, Carinado do include that GN uh, GTN 750 compatibility with their aircraft, which is something I should pick up soon as well, which of course gives you a lot of advantages in that regard for navigation and communication. Always useful for big trips. I might actually fit that before I go on my cross Canada expedition in this aircraft, especially with the speed it has. It's exactly what I'm looking for. I find the Seneca's visibility is crappy in the Seneca 5. So what do I think? What's the AV score on this Carinado beauty? It's going to have its flaws, yes. It's going to have its inaccuracies, but I think they're always a solid 8. The engine sounds at first felt a little bit odd, but after hearing it at max chat in the air, it very much sounds like the Skymaster. And from what I can see, as I turn my head off there, she's exactly what I expected. Exactly what I expected. I do petition this Carinado though to please... Where the hell did the pilots go? Did they just get out and run away? Get back in here. I wasn't done with you two. I petition Carinado to please update your fleet to allow us to use our selectable pilots. Please, for the love of God, please. It's a modern simulator with that functionality. Let us be able to put our own pilot and co-pilot in there. For God's sake, come on. That's the one thing I always hate about Carinado aircraft is I just lose that immersion of suddenly having these two grumpy old people. Well, grumpy old man and his grumpy son. Carinado, please. Let us have our own pilots. 
Is it worth the 20 bucks? If you like Carolina Aircraft, yes. Is it going to have some inaccuracies? Probably. But from that very, very quick initial flight, it's behaving exactly as I'd expect it to. I'd say yes. I'm going to give it the usual Coronado 8 abs. No glaring faults so far, but it is a quick test flight. If you want to see if you want to buy it, this is something you can check out to see what it will do for you and where those functions are. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.